Do you believe foam masts pose a health hazard? Would you pay £130,000 to stop one being built in your street? Tonight, we report from a community facing that very dilemma. But first tonight, phone masks. No, it's not another story about whether they cause cancer or create an eyesore. This is a story of hard cash that matters to everyone living in rented accommodation. A group of tenants has been told that they must accept a mobile phone mask on their roof or stump up £130,000. Now, their landlord, who doesn't live in the area, has been offered the cash by mobile phone company Orange to put two masks on his property. The tenants don't want it, but he says why should he be out of pocket? The tenants either agree or they pay him the money. Well, Chris Rogers is at the flats in Wimbledon with more on this now. Chris? Well, as soon as our cameras turned up, so did the protesters. They're not backing down. No sign of a checkbook uh, from the protesters, I'm afraid. Just posters saying no to orange. There is scientific proof to show that there are not dangerous levels of radiation emitted from mobile phone masks, but they're just not buying that. The landlord today has turned around to the Wimbledon Park community and said, OK, if you stand by your beliefs, put your money where your mouth is. That's the only way to end this latest mast row. Residents of Wimbledon Park will soon have a new object on their skyline. Campaigners are meeting tonight to discuss last-minute tactics to stop the phone masts being erected in their street. But it's a battle they know they're losing. In just a few days, two masts will be erected on top of this building. Residents are furious, claiming it will pose a health hazard from radiation and devalue their homes. This is the third time they've had to put up a mast in a residential area. We've now got a petition together of over 3,000 signatures. We're taking it to Parliament next week. Our voices should be heard. Hello, I'm the landlord from the next door building and I was approached by Orange three times to put a mast on top of my building. As a local businessman, I took great objection to that. There are many more young children living in this part of London than there are in most parts of London, and it simply isn't fair to put them at potential risk from this mobile phone mast. I'm particularly worried about the health hazard because I live only four houses away. The landlord refused to appear on camera, but he did tell London tonight he would be happy to refuse permission for the masts to be erected on his building if the residents paid him £130,000. He says that would go towards the loss of earnings for his company from Orange. Campaign leader Danica Fairman has this message for the landlord. If you put this mast up, you know, you'll be tied in for 10 years by signing a contract with Orange. In those 10 years, if anyone in the community gets ill, they're going to come to you for compensation. But are their concerns justified? Is it worth paying £130,000 to keep the masts out? The World Health Organization and mobile phone companies insist phone masts pose no threat to health. Ingrid Dickinson believes her son fell ill with nosebleeds and headaches because of transmitter emissions. So she set up an organization that monitors radiation levels in communities living with a mast. The research which is actually uh, backed by a lot of very esteemed international scientists is showing that there is a real biological effect from electromagnetic pollution, i.e. pulse magnetic fields from uh, wireless computers, uh, masks, mobile phones. We are seeing a pattern emerging now of sleeplessness, high blood pressure, heart rhythm disturbances, cancer. We're seeing a pattern disturb uh, uh, emerging uh, around masks, clusters around masks. Because Wimbledon Park campaigners have chosen to believe the findings of Ingrid's organisation rather than the World Health Organisation, they are now facing a huge bill if they're to keep a mast out of their patch. And it's a bill that these residents have just told me they simply can't afford. In a last-ditch effort to stop this mast being erected, they're taking a 3,000 signature petition to Parliament next week. And I should just say that Orange have released a statement reiterating that there is nothing to suggest there is ill health caused by mobile phone masts after years of international research. They say they've looked at 25 sites in the area and this is by far the best one. And it seems tonight this is where it's going to be erected. Chris, thank you very much. That's a tricky one, this, and we'd like to hear from you on it. The details you need to contact us are on the screen now. Where do you come down on this argument? Do you side with those residents or with the property owner?
and we thought we might broaden it out a bit tonight. What is the most unusual or outrageous thing that you've ever had a landlord ask you to do? Drop us your thoughts and we'll read out a selection at the end of the programme.